Next question is from Petro Julie. In your opinion, how credible is a personal trainer if they're not in their best shape at the moment? Yeah. In it, their best shape? So that's judgmental. A high, yeah, that's a high standard, right? You know, working with a lot of trainers, uh, I'll tell you the, the, okay, if you're really out of shape, it'll probably hurt your business. Of course. Yeah. Because is. people are going to look at you and judge your ability that's to train them. That's your business them. card. Yeah. But uh, look, the, some of the most successful trainers ever, actually, all the successful trainers ever had, the most successful ones, none of them were the most ripped fit looking trainers. They definitely worked out and they took care of themselves. No, because what comes with that is obsession and those people yeah. and that I think it's 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 rare, but if you can find somebody who can keep themselves in extremely good shape and then also has tremendous amount of humility uh, around it, uh, I think that's a really dangerous combination as far as they'll be very probably successful, but many times when we see a trainer who's absolutely jacked they're still dealing with insecurities that drove them in that direction to be that way and so they tend to be more cocky more arrogant they're less relatable and so it doesn't actually translate into more trainer sales as it is so having a nice balance right so if you've got a, a definitely a physique that someone looks at goes like oh he or she works out they look great or whatever like that but maybe not so crazy that it's intimidating i think that's probably the sweet spot for like as far if we're talking about like business wise mm -hmm. for a trainer and yeah, the, was and, aria he's like the only one i've met that is like has a, like an insano physique but is still relatable and nice you know yeah it's the relatable part yeah that's a hard it's a hard combo i mean how do you relate even i had challenges relating some and initially when i first became a trainer because i i assumed that people hired me and were ready to jump into it with the fanaticism that I had. And it took me a second to figure out that most people don't want to work out all the time. They don't love it so much that they'll do it all the time. Right, right. I have to figure out how to relate to them and they have to, you know, to in, or, in order to communicate to them how to make this a part of their life. One, I remember one time I, I, I uh, took a trainer or took a member off the floor and recruited them as a trainer. It was a member who lost 50 pounds coming to the gym, initially worked with the trainer, worked out on their own. By no means did they lose the 50 pounds and look like some you know, super ripped person. They lost 50 pounds and looked normal and relatively healthy. They didn't look like a crazy personal trainer. I recruited them, and that trainer did such a good job relating to other people. In fact, other people liked hiring him because he looked like you know, more like they did than like the super ripped trainers. And he did very, very well. I think you have to have a balance. I mean, I, I've talked a long, it's been a long time since I've brought this up on the show, but there was a time, I think it was like, I was on year five or six as a, as a fitness manager. And uh, up until that point, uh, I just assumed that that had to be mandatory. Like I can't hire a trainer who's not fit. They need to be at like, they need to be really fit for most people that, that to, for me to even consider hiring them that originally. And then I thought, you know what? Like after I've been training trainers for such a long time, and then he met me. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> maybe maybe you were like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you were, you were fit. fit. You were a freaking football uh, player, uh, so that you were still fit. Yeah. Yeah. He was there. So uh, no, layer, I'm talking like on top of I'm me. talking about. I I actually went to like an extreme level. I I I hired somebody that the average person wouldn't think worked out at all. But they had they dropped a good 30, 30 plus pounds themselves. They had a good They'd story. They've been on the journey. They yeah. were they had uh, they had experience uh, is with um, their their education. They had a kines degree. They had got a national certification, so they had a good education level. They had experience losing weight, but definitely did not look the part. And so I went on this kick of like hiring some trainers that were like this to see how they would do. And being completely uh, uh, transparent, they didn't do very well. They had a hard time. They, they struggled with that because many people are very judgmental. Right? And a lot of people right away, if they want to change their physique, they want to be inspired by the person that, that's coaching them. But at the, to a point, they don't need to be so crazy ridiculous. They just need to be better than the person that's hiring them. That That's a challenge, right? If you're somebody who's like 20 pounds overweight and your trainer is 30 pounds overweight, it's really tough for you to get inspired by them, even if they've already had a big journey and they've lost it. And that's not to say, right. I don't want to discourage somebody who's in that situation that's having success. There's always exceptions to the rule. I've seen I've seen fat trainers do really really well. If you got a mouthpiece on you, you're likable. There you can overcome any of that. Mm -hmm. But there's there is a point that I think it it matters for a trainer to have an easier time being successful. That looking relatively fit I think is important. But also not being so so fit that you're not relatable because I think yeah. there's a part of people that want to see something that's actually kind of attainable too. Like if you see someone who looks like a cover model 
sometimes people just write it off like I'll never look like that girl or that yeah, guy. Yeah, and also I also look the most successful trainers I've ever worked with had the right attitudes. They really had a passion for health and fitness. Now the side effect of that usually means that they're pretty fit because they believe what they're preaching. Right. So I don't know if it's necessarily, except for the extremes, the fact that they looked fit that attracted clients. I think it's more that they actually believed in what they talked about mm -hmm. and the side effect of that being that they lived that lifestyle as well. And that's what made them successful trainers. Well, it's really, it's the passion. And it, it the thing is, regardless of what they look like, if you can see like how much they're trying to, they've tried to improve themselves and like how passionate they are about fitness, uh, you know, that's going to come across. And so like, it, unfortunately, you're going to see that with some trainers that really don't put a lot of attention into themselves and they don't uh, take themselves that seriously. That's going to come across to, to the client. And so you just got to check yourself on that. Are you, you, yourself trying your best to you know present yourself in a certain way the consumer sometimes too is like they don't know what the hell they're looking at like i've had trainers that don't look super fit like they're not ripped they don't have abs uh, and maybe they're carrying a little bit of extra body fat but shit they're mobile as hell they're strong as hell like they have other attributes that they right. care they care less about the way they look they're like I'm not hung up on trying to be, you know, single digit yeah. body fat percentage, but they're they're deeply passionate about mobility and strength and mm -hmm. being functional. And so maybe the average consumer who's been marketed to all the time by these billboards or ads and magazines of this is what a trainer should look like, they assume that oh, this is what if they don't look like this, they're a lazier or less intelligent type of a trainer, which that couldn't be further from the truth because there's many right. times there's trainers that actually are very secure with who they are. They don't give a shit about comparing themselves to the next guy or guy or girl that's, you know, super ripped. They care about the other aspects of health and fitness. And until you meet that trainer, or get to talk to them, you may not know that. So that's I would good, caution consumers. And that's a good point because the, then you look at the opposite, like a, a consumer who doesn't know any better may look at someone who's shredded and think, oh, that's a good trainer, not realizing that that person has bad relationship with food, they severely restrict themselves, or they binge when a show is over, that they have zero balance in their lives, or fanatics to the point where it's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And so looking at them, you're like, that person understands how to help me develop a lifelong relationship with, <laughs> right. with fitness and health, when in reality, that person doesn't even know how to do it for themselves, let alone do it for another client. And, some, and I've seen those trainers, and I've seen the way that they train their clients, and it's like they tr the way they train themselves. Here's your meal plan. Follow yeah, this. Stick yeah. to it. Here's your cheat days. Eat whatever you want. This is when you can go off. Oh, here's how you're going to restrict your, your water because you're going on, uh, to the beach. And I'm like, what are you teaching your client? Right. This is yes. not the way to, to, to you know, produce success with people.